In this tutorial, we're going to look at setting up very simple 2D animation using the Mechanum 2D Animation Bridge. To get set up, I've created a folder called Animation Tutorial and I've imported a sprite sheet. I've set up various frames on this sprite sheet. For example, here's some walk frames. And here's some jump frames. I've also created animations such as jump, idle, crutch, and slide. I'll show you how to quickly create an animation, and I'll do this for the walk. I'm going to select my walk frames and drag them to the hierarchy. This will ask me for the name of a new animation to save this as. I'm going to call this Miyamoto Walk. This creates a game object with an animation and sprite renderer. We don't actually need the animation controller, so we can delete it. And we also don't need the game object, so let's delete that too. With a new scene, find the camera and change it to an orthographic projection. I'm going to use size 6, although it's not particularly important. We're now going to search for templates and find the basic character template, which will drop into the hierarchy, and also the geometry quick test template, which will drop into the hierarchy. This gives us a very basic game. We have a cube who can move and jump. A little clean up here. We don't want to edit these template objects. So let's click the template for the basic character. And from the game object menu, choose break prefab instance. We also need to break the connection to the template animation controller. Click the character sprite object, find the controller and click it, which will highlight it in your project view. Click this controller and use Control D or the menu system to duplicate. We're going to call this animation tutorial controller. Let's drop it now animation tutorial folder. We need to make sure that this controller is associated with our character. So let's find our character sprite and drag this tutorial controller across to the controller field of the animator. The animation steps are quite easy. Let's select our character sprite and just change the default sprite. And with that selected, Click the Animator tab, or use the Window menu to bring up the animator. Each of the states will currently be associated with this template sprite empty animation. We're simply going to take our animations and drag them to the matching states. We'll start with Idle. We'll drag our Idle animation to the motion field of this animation state. Then we'll select Walk and drag our Walk animation to the motion field of the walk state. For run we'll use the same walk animation. For jump we find our jump animation and drag it to the motion field of the jump animation state. We'll use the same jump animation for both airborne and falling. Your character may have different animations for these states. For the moment we won't worry about the damaged and death states. With that done, let's hit play. We'll see we're most of the way there to animating, but that our colliders now no longer match our sprite. This is a quick fix. Click Template Basic Character, find the Collider Editor section and press Reset Colliders. We'll look at it the scene view so we can see what's going on. We're going to use basic sprite detection. 
to choose the border for our sprites. So find the reset button next to that item and press it. The colliders now align with our character. Let's refine them a little bit. We're going to bring the feet in a little bit and add an extra collider in the middle. We're going to bring the sides both up and down and also add an extra collider in the middle. And for the head, we'll simply add an extra collider in the middle. With that done, press play and we'll see our character is mostly animated. However, he's not turning around to face the direction he's walking in. Select the character sprite and add a component that's a direction facer. We want, we want the Unity Sprite Direction Facer. Hit play. And we now have a basic 2D animated character. Let's add a new state to the character by adding a new movement. Select the character, press Add Component and choose Ground Movement. And we're going to leave this Crouch Digital No Crawl. So this is a crouch movement that doesn't allow you to move forward or backward. Basically it just crouches. I'm going to move this up in the hierarchy because the lowest ground movement is considered the default ground movement. We don't want our crouch to be default. We only want our crouch to happen when a specific input, in this case pressing downwards, happens. With our movement rearranged so that it's above the other movements, we're now ready to crouch. Let's see what happens. Well, of course we don't crouch, we haven't added a crouch animation. And if we look at the console, we'll see there's an error. The state crouch is not in the animator. State names must be an exact uppercase match for the animation. Okay, let's go to our animator and create an empty state. We'll drag it over here with the rest of the ground movements and we need to change its name so it's an exact match for the state crouch. Let's do that. Now we can simply drag the crouch animation to the motion field of the newly created crouch state. Press play and we can now crouch. And there we have it, 2D animation. In subsequent tutorials, we'll look at more complex 2D animation using animations with transition as well as animation overrides and animation mapping. We'll also look at 3D animation. Stay tuned.